So I'm sure you'll cover uh, the federal budget more in your, some of your other classes, but I wanted to quickly talk about it a little bit here. We're going to talk about uh, tax revenues and government spending and then the value of government spending. Uh, lastly, we're going to talk a little bit about national debt, deficits, and uh, the future of the U.S. government's continued spending more than it takes in revenue. So since about the mid-1950s, the United States government has spent about 20% of GDP and has raised about 18% of GDP. You notice there is a 2% gap between the amount the government has spent and the amount that it has brought in in taxes. Uh, the spending, 20% of GDP, was worth about $4 trillion in 2017. So we're going to talk about where that money comes from, where it goes, and how long the U.S. can keep spending more than it raises in taxes. So, if the government is taking is spending four trillion dollars in 2017, it was taking in around 3.6 trillion dollars in 2017. That works out to around 11 thousand dollars in taxes for every man, woman, and child in the United States. 90 percent of that comes from three sources. 50 percent comes from the individual income tax. Another third comes from payroll taxes such as Social Security and Medicare. And another 10% comes from the corporate income tax. We're going to break down most of the different types of taxes briefly here. Uh, but first, we need to talk about what tax rates are. The marginal tax rate. The U.S. tax code is not a flat code. Not everyone pays the same percentage of their income in taxes. If you pay 10% on the first $100 you earn, and 20% of the next $100 you earn, the marginal tax rate on the 201st dollar might be 20%. The marginal tax rate is the tax rate paid on an additional dollar of income. The average tax rate is much simpler. It's a total tax payment divided by total income. So let's get into that 50% of total tax revenues that come from the individual income tax. Let's talk about marginal tax rates. So, for the first $18,550 $18, you earn, the marginal tax rate is 10%. That means each dollar you earn up to $18,550, you pay 10 cents on the dollar. Now, for each dollar you earn greater than $466,950, the marginal tax rate is 39.6%. That means the next dollar you earn, the 4,666, or 4,000, the 466,951st dollar, you keep 60 cents and the government takes 40 cents. And the 952nd dollar, you keep 60 cents, the government takes 40. The 953rd, you keep 60 cents, the government takes 40. These are actually pretty low tax rates relative to history. In the 1960, in 1960, the lowest marginal tax rate was 20%, which means the first dollar you earned, you kept 80% of it, the government took 20%. The highest rate was 91%, which means at that point, you only kept 9 cents on each dollar in uh, income that you earned. 91 cents on the dollar went to the government. So, the marginal rate determines things like the incentive to work additional hours. For instance, let's say you earned $50,000. So, you pay 10% on the first $18,550. You keep 90 cents on each dollar you earn. That is, you pay $1,855 in taxes on the first $18,000 you earn. But <clears throat> since your income is 50,000, you earn another 31,450. And you pay 15% on that, 15% on the next $31,450. That's the equivalent of $4,718 in taxes. We can calculate then your average tax rate as 1,855 plus 4,718, that is 6,573, divided by 50,000. 13.1% average tax rate. But 
If you're thinking of working an additional hour, you're only going to keep 85 cents on the dollar because your marginal tax rate is 15% now. So if you're trying to decide whether to work an additional hour, you don't care about this 13% tax rate. You care about the 15% tax rate. You only keep 85 cents of each dollar that you earn after 50,000. The 50,000 in first dollar, you're only keeping 85 cents. So here's the relationship between marginal tax rates and average tax rates. You can see as the marginal tax rate increases, the average tax rate also increases. But when you're thinking about working an additional hour, you should be thinking about the marginal tax rate. Now, not all income gets taxed. Generally, every person gets one tax exemption. If you have a spouse, you get another, and if you have children, you get another for them, also for dependents. As of 2016, an exemption would allow you to keep $4,050 of your income tax-free. So you would have $4,050 that you don't pay taxes on. If you had a spouse, then you'd keep $4,050 plus $4,050. Together, you'd keep $8,100 of your income tax-free. You can also deduct expenses, like the home mortgage interest, donations to charity, state and local taxes, and student loans interest. Uh, this has an interesting incentive. Because uh, home mortgage interest is deducted, that incentivizes people to want to own homes because then they can reduce their tax burden. Incentivizing people to own homes does sound very similar to some of the negative consequences that caused the 2007 recession, doesn't it? So, income received from interest, dividends, and capital gains is also taxed. This means that if you earn money and you pay an average tax rate of 21% on it, you keep 79 cents of each dollar across all of your income if your average tax rate is 21 percent then you take those 79 cents on the dollar that you've earned and you invest it well then you have to pay more taxes on any interest that you get off of that investment so the income can be double taxed there's another problematic thing the alternative minimum tax the alternative minimum tax was started in 1969 to target the extremely wealthy, who it was found that was often able to avoid paying any taxes because of loopholes. The alternative minimum taxes requires taxpayers to make two different computations and pay the higher of the two, whatever they would own under the standard tax code or whatever they would owe under the alternative minimum tax. The problem is that the alternative minimum tax wasn't indexed for inflation, which means that whereas originally the alternative minimum tax was here and the standard tax is here, now the alternative minimum tax is dropping as inflation occurs. These days, the alternative minimum tax has been hitting people with less than six figures in income. And since you have to pay the higher of the two rates, this is meaning more and more people are forced to pay the alternative minimum tax and pay more in taxes. It's no longer just targeting the wealthy. In fact, now it's targeting some people who are almost certainly upper middle class. You would think that we would have found a way to re-index it to inflation, but there has been no political agreement on how to do such a thing or what it should look like if it should be. And this extra tax income is currently being spent, as we'll see later in the chapter few more taxes to look at, payroll taxes, Social Security and Medicare. So almost all U.S. workers pay the FICA tax, F-I-C-A. That funds Social Security payments. The FICA tax is 6.2% of your wages on the first uh, $120,000, and employers pay another 6.2% tax on the same earnings. In micro, we'll talk about elasticity. But Research shows that actually pretty much the whole 12.4% tax is paid by employees. Basically, your bosses give you a 6.2% lower wage in the first place in order to make up for the fact that they have to pay this tax. Your prospective wage is lower because employers have to pay this tax. So most of this tax 
is not actually paid by employers. It's mostly paid by you just by getting a lower uh, prospective wage. Medicare is financed out of uh, general revenues and also out of a special payroll tax. This is 1.45% on employers and 1.45% on workers. Again, most of that is paid for with lower prospective wages. Workers pay for most of it. Self-employed individuals pay the full 2.9% themselves.